So along with the embedded images that you can put on pages, there's also a place for two other images on every page or every database entry on your site. At the top here, if you hover over, you'll see three links, add icon, add cover, and add comment. So comments are for talking between multiple users in the same installation. We're not going to worry about that for now, but these two we'll look at. So we click on add icon. Notion will add a random icon in here. We have a, a karate outfit or something. We can, whatever it is it puts there, you can click on it and do a few things. You can choose a different emoji. You can upload your own image or link to an image somewhere. So we'll click on face with tears of joy and have that be your image. Now you notice two things. One, it put the image at the top like we expected, but it's also now the icon for that page on the left. And so this can be useful as you have more and more pages to have good icons to help you quickly find the pages you want. Now the other thing we can do is we can hover over and hit add cover. And this will take it a second to load in a cover, but it's gonna, again, like with the image, it's gonna load a random cover image. And here we can hover over that and we can change cover or reposition. So if we reposition, we can kind of drag the image around a little bit to the spot we want it to be, save the position or we can change the cover. And it has some colors and gradients in here. It has an archive of NASA stuff. You can upload your own. It also has Unsplash. We can pull in licensed images, or, you know, free, free to use images that you can use in your Notion. So we click on that guy. And again, give it a second and it'll load up at the top there for us. Again, I don't quite like the position there. I can hit reposition, make it look a little bit better. And that's a pretty good, pretty good place. We'll save it there. Now this plays a role too in some of the databases that we'll get to in a little while. But this is a nice thing you can do for your pages. If you want that extra look at the top, great way to do that. If you change your mind and don't want an image, uh, if you hover over the cover and hit change cover, you can hit remove on the right. And then same with the icon, you can click on the icon and choose remove on the right if you somehow want to take them back off. Because the one other advantage uh, with the icons is they color in if there's content on the page. So for example, we have that one book that has nothing on it. So we'll go make another one. We'll make another page here called, oops, slash page, called that other book. Another book too. And we're going to add some text here and say, this is about that other book too. Okay, and we'll leave it at that. If we go back now, you notice the icon slightly different because it's showing some lines in there to show you that it has content on that page. And that can be useful, again, if you have a lot of things on a page, I can know just glancing that that one book has no content and there's nothing in there yet. If I actually even just click enter and make a blank line, that is considered content and it has the lines there now. So you have to kind of backspace your way out to get to this list of stuff to be completely blank. So I find those pretty useful just to be able to see at a glance what has content in it, especially for some of our team lists. We have some to-do lists and stuff for each other. I know whether I need to click to see details or not because of that. But if you do a custom icon on the page, and we go back, all you see is that custom icon. You lose the ability to see that. So there's advantages both ways. Custom icons can look nice and make things easier to find, but having that native icon offers a few advantages too. Um, the cover image, like I said, we'll talk about some of the databases, particularly the galleries and some of those and some of the advantages you can pull from that. So hope that was helpful and on to the next one.